Hi everyone and welcome to our new series of reviews dedicated to War Thunder's maps. We continue our journey of topographic discovery and today we'll take a closer look at Stalingrad. The location itself is a snow-clad tractor factory, the workshops of which are now a battleground for tanks neighbored by workers' housing blocks and an oil storage plant. This is essentially an urban map, but instead of the usual street combat, players have to maneuver between small cover, train cars and ruined workshops that allow you to use outflanking maneuvers and lay effective ambushes. Oh yeah, a few words about ambushes. Can you see that American M22 Locust anywhere around here? But it's right here. You can spot it only by its radio antenna sticking out, which is even harder to do in heat of battle, mind you. A T-92 could be hiding in there just as easily. Small but well-coordinated teams of two tankers are most effective in this environment, whereas larger formations are but an easy prey for lone players in hiding. Your aircraft is of little help on this map. Effective bombing of the workshops is not just difficult, it is next to impossible. While enemy AAAs can engage the aerial targets at their leisure, enjoying plentiful cover on the ground. But the bots are unturred and will always carry out their carpet bombing strikes early in the beginning of the match. As to the balance, we can say that a small advantage is given to the team which spawn point is closer to River Volga. Let's play some domination. Here, the red team spawns near the river and can easily access its home capture point Alpha. A multitude of cover positions provide outstanding defense for the spot, while the very same cover can be used to retreat if the going gets too tough. Now, let's take a closer look at capture point Charlie, which is now being seized by the opposite team. The cover here is much larger, but it is split into two, two large objects, while the approaches to them are well covered from the enemy positions. Actually, capturing this point will be a lot more difficult. Should an attempt to seize begin, the Reds can easily prevent that by sending an artillery barrage at this fuel reservoir, since this place is a logical and a decently protected position. Ultimately, the defender will either have to heroically suffer anywhere from 3 to 7 artillery strikes or beat a hasty retreat, which in turn will buy time for the enemy to approach closer and block any further attempts to consolidate, well, at least any that are coming from the side of the railroad. The outflanking approach is not safe either, which is hinted at by these three wrecks of Soviet tanks frozen in their marching formation. The blue team also has some problems with capture point Bravo. If the blues lose any combat in the workshops, any hopes of seizing the central point on the railroad will be crushed. Why? Because there's no decent cover going that way and that is required to mount a successful offensive. While the few cover spots that are actually there are clearly visible from the home side of the map. So, how do you play the blues here? First off, try and wrestle the alpha point from the enemy, preferably with the backing of your entire team. Then establish total control of the workshops and cordon off the enemy's respawn point. Then capture Bravo, when you know your rear is covered by your teammates. You can also split your forces and capture your home point, but this option is a lot harder to pull off and requires a high degree of coordination on the part of your allies. All in all, Stalingrad is definitely an interesting and fun map to play and is unlike any other in the game at the moment. It has its own brand of gameplay and tactics, enriching your everyday gaming experience. That's it for today, we're Thunder Tutorials signing out.